Once again, there are no new cases of COVID-19 to report in New Zealand. Our total number of confirmed cases therefore remains at 1,154 and we will continue to report that number to the World Health Organisation and our combined total of confirmed and probable cases is 1,504. Our total number of recovered cases is now 1,461 and we have only 22 active cases still in New Zealand. There are no additional deaths to report and there is just one person still in hospital and that person does not require intensive care treatment. Yesterday our labs processed 1,841 tests. Uh, we usually see a lower number on Sunday and Monday and so that's what's coming through there. And to date the grand total is 263,156. A word or two on the New Zealand Tracer, COVID Tracer app. So the app has now recorded 405,000 registrations, an increase of 25,000 since this time yesterday, so the numbers continue to increase daily. And I'll continue to encourage as many Kiwis as possible to download the app, uh, even if the functionality at this point is still relatively limited. Just by registering, it means that we have securely held your uh, updated uh, contact details in case we need to contact you only for the purposes of tracing if you are potentially or have been exposed to a case. There are now uh, uh, 15,500 uh, QR posters that have been downloaded and displayed by businesses and that represents about a quarter of what we call active businesses, that is the ones that people are likely to be visiting like retails, uh, uh, settings or um, hospitality venues. Oh, we're continuing to make good process under Alert Level 2 and today's uh, case uh, number of zero again confirms that. Our uh, case numbers are low, uh, obviously our recovery rate is now high and we have only one person still requiring hospital level care. So the hard work put in by New Zealanders to this point means that yesterday the government was able to announce that extension of the maximum group number size from 10 up to 100 taking effect from midday on Friday this week. So as of then, or from then, many of the activities that people have been uh, looking forward to enjoying in large, larger groups, such as church and faith-based gatherings, as well as family events and weddings, will be able to take place. Uh, so with the exception of uh, larger, more significant events like large um, sporting fixtures and concerts and the like, it means that most uh, normal or everyday activities are now possible in some form under Alert Level 2. Some people are asking how quickly we might move to Alert Level 1 and whether we should be aiming to get there sooner than the four week period signalled by the Prime Minister yesterday. I think it's important to keep in perspective that New Zealand is already moving through the Alert Levels and relaxing its restrictions more quickly than other countries including our nearest neighbour Australia. We are acutely aware that under the Alert Level 2 restrictions there are still uh, constraints on some businesses and on everybody's um, daily lives and we want to be careful to get the balance right. We are working hard already to um, lay out the detail of what Alert Level 1 might look like so that we can move there as soon as it is safe to do so. Uh, moving on to vaccines. Uh, I understand a ministerial announcement is being made presently on New Zealand's COVID-19 vac vaccine strategy and the Ministry of Health uh, played a role in developing this up. It aims to secure a vaccine that is safe and effective for New Zealanders at the earliest possible time. Obviously the development of such a vaccine will be a key tool not just in our um, efforts to, to uh, control COVID-19 but in global efforts. The strategy is designed to ensure that New Zealand contributes to both uh, the research and discovery of a vaccine and its development, but also testing and then the supply. All these elements are covered in the strategy. It enables our scientists to contribute to and be linked into global research efforts and, to, and will ensure that we are active participants in all the process of developing a vaccine, including opportunities for onshore production should those be required. Uh, more information on the vaccine strategy will be available on the MB website. 
Uh, just an update on quarantine and managed isolation. You may have heard mentioned yesterday that we welcomed our 10,000th uh, person into uh, uh, managed isolation in, uh, or quarantine in Auckland. So far around 8,000 New Zealanders and others have completed their stay in Auckland and Christchurch and have returned to their homes here in New Zealand. Their commitment to managed isolation is a commitment that we will continue to support and that will support the health and safety of all New Zealanders as part of our overall COVID-19 approach. Let's be clear here, the border is our riskiest area and it is critical, a critical part of the government's overall elimination strategy and this is especially now that we feel confident we have broken the chain of domestic transmission. We do not want to put the good progress we've made in jeopardy uh, and we know that international arrivals are essentially the potential source of new infections in Aotearoa. However, we have also been very mindful of the advice from a recent High Court ru ruling and the need to consider all requests for an exemption from that process of quarantine or managed self-isolation to consider those all very carefully. And we do this with great care and as quickly as possible. A number of exemptions have now been granted and every exemption is looked at on its merits. However, every exemption to that very tight border process does create risk and they are therefore only granted in exceptional circumstances.